I am super excited today. I am I'm ready to learn. So I'm just going to wait briefly today before I bring in my guest. So if you're dead now, please just say hello and uh, let me know you are joining me or joining us already or you've joined. If you don't mind, just go ahead and help us share the video so that as many as possible can be blessed. Let's learn together. Today is a special day. It's going to be an awesome time today. And today we are talking about parental tracking in early childhood. It's a very important day. My love for children, if you know me too well, you know it cannot be overemphasized. And today I'm so privileged to be having a specialist joining me today. And we are going to be talking about tracking, tracking. A lot of people that I've spoken to in the past, I realize that they don't even understand what is tracking, what to track, how to go about tracking. So today is a very special day to me personally. And, uh, and that's why I'm saying, if you don't mind, thank you, Dickie Nomo, for joining. God bless you, sir. That if you don't mind, please help us share. It's not compulsory. Uh, it's, no, you're not under pressure. If you don't mind, it's really up to you. Go ahead and share. Invite your friends. Invite your family. It is time to learn. See, right here I have my pen. My notebook is right here. I am always ready to learn. So let's know more. Let's learn more. I'll be bringing my guest in shortly. So we're talking about tracking, parental tracking in early childhood. What is tracking? How can you track your child? Why do you need to track? What are the things to track? The importance of tracking. All right, there you go. Thank you for joining me, Elsie. God bless you, Mama. Just like the way I love to call you. Good Thank afternoon. you for joining. Yes, I'll just I'll just introduce you, then I will let you talk to people. See, or just as you know, I'm so happy to have you here today. I am not taking you joining me today for granted. It really means a lot to me, and I believe you know that already. So I'm just going to be introducing my guest briefly, and uh, I'm just going to let her talk. See, I, I just want to learn today. So you are not going to see much of Oye today. Oye is not going to do, hopefully. <laughs> I'm not going to do a lot of talking today because I have my mama here. Kelsey is one of my mama, and I'm just going to do, in, I'll be doing a short introduction of her. My special guest today is Elsie Dupreis from South Africa. She has been an occupational therapist since 1990. Did you hear that? 1990, that is 32 years ago. Even some of us, maybe, anyways, I was born then. Some of you that are listening, maybe you were not born, you know. Since 1990, 32 years is not a joke. She has experience working in a uh, pediatric she has worked in different countries and currently in Doha, Qatar at Ahmad Medical Corporation for the last 10 years. In the early years intervention program with children ages from zero to three. She is a wife and the mother of a beautiful lady. The lady is also a teacher. That's a bonus, keep that. She's also a teacher. <laughs> a bonus for you to know about that. And a passion for toys, I mean, Elsie's passion for toys cannot be overemphasized, you know? When you love children, when you, when you understand these things, you understand the attachment with toys, especially educational toys, that these kids grow a lot with it. In the last two videos, I was talking about our toys, uh, our toys are getting ready. So she's also passionate about toys. And with my heart full of joy. I want to say you're welcome. You're welcome. You can say hello to everyone and let them get, let them get to hear you. And just keep start by telling us uh, uh, what is tracking and why we need to track. You're welcome okay, again. Good morning Elsie. or good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. It's my privilege to Pleasure. be here. We are glad yeah, to have good. you. So, thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, yes, I'm happy to talk about tracking today. When you ask me about tracking, Obviously, the first thing we will be thinking about is people are tracking us, right? We're all mm. walk, walking around with our mobile phones and we are being tracked. But tracking, when we're talking about children, when we're talking about childcare, when we're talking about babies, we're talking more about visual tracking. So that's what we want to focus on today, is about visual tracking, how important it is, when it starts developing, what it is. 
So if we're looking at visual tracking, it probably is easy. You'll say, well, I'm, my child is following. She's looking everywhere. It's the ability that the eye movements are making to move around. And we need that. Why do we need this? We, it's important for us. It's important for interaction with our environment. So without tracking, we can't be involved with our environment. We can't see what's happening around us. I was thinking yesterday, um, without tracking, if you ask the children, your children, to go get something out of the refrigerator, and you say, get the milk, they won't know where to look. So tracking helps with all these things. It helps with coordination. It helps with reading. It helps with eye-hand coordination. It helps with postural control and body awareness. So as a parent, as all of you, maybe a lot of you are parents, you know that this is an important part of development. And there are two types of tracking. Obviously, it's not just about looking around to where things are, what things are happening. It's also shifting our focus. So when we're looking at something and somebody is asking us something, then we shifting focus we're looking at them and then we're looking back at something that we're busy maybe we're on the phone and then we're looking at something else. so that's shifting focus you need that when you're in a school when you're school and you're listening to the teacher you have to shift focus sometimes something else is taking your attention and then another type of track tracking is maintaining focus so you're trying to look at something and you're trying to focus on something so some children do struggle with that they struggle with maintaining focus and they also struggle with uh, shifting focus um yes do you want to say something no 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 i'm just i'm learning i'm just see my pen is right here no um, i'll talk a lot so you can stop me in between oh uh, no worries I don't want to go talk ahead all mama the time. go ahead okay. you you have all the time thank you okay so tracking is it's a it's a key visual perceptual skill that we need and it starts with attention right so when we're looking at a baby, um, as early as birth, the child is starting to pay some type of attention. And when we're looking at children between zero to three months, how, are, how do we know that they are showing attention? They're looking at the mom's face when she's feeding them. They're making sounds. They're just looking up at the mom. And maybe in the beginning, you think they're not really looking. And then they start to smile. And they, have, they start with some kind of, interaction between you and the mom uh, the, the child and the mom so that that starts very early so sounds and then around about six months they start laughing of course we all think our child smiles within the first week but we really know that they only start smiling later and then they start actually laughing so laughing is also a part of attention and it's also the development of the attention and then by um maybe around nine months they start interacting they're looking around they're interested in other people not just in their mother obviously when they're around six months old they start recognizing or before that three months they know that that's their mother and then by six months they know that that's not their mother that's some another person and then around nine months they have that object permanence where where you drop something and before that when you drop something they're not looking to find it but around nine months, they start looking for whatever you dropped and it's rolling away and they're trying to look at it. So they're locating it. So they're looking, they're following their attention towards that. And then obviously, when we're looking at pointing, pointing is a very important part because that means that maybe you're reading to the child, the child's sitting on your lap and you're reading a story. Hopefully you're not holding your cell phone and they're swiping the cell phone because nowadays children are swiping the cell phone and not turning a page in a book right and one yes. of the tests that we do is we're looking at how the child is turning the page not necessarily how they're swiping the phone but swiping getting it. nine month old that can swipe a phone and they can start a, an app which i don't know how they do that it's it's unbelievable yes. Yes, so, oh but, so you I think uh, we have a lot to digest in this about, I think you've only yes, spoken about one to two minutes, but there is a lot that you've spoken, I uh, know, in this short period. Do you want me so to I just over? Know, uh, not really, uh, because, no, uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Uh, just as I always say, if you have any question, uh, note it down in your book. Also, you can drop it immediately in the comment section. But if your comment is so personal to you, 
please uh, you can uh, send your question on the messenger or you send us an email at uh, the vision guide at gmail.com so just go ahead if you feel it's too personal you can't drop the comment i know how it feels like uh, i don't want people to think otherwise of me go ahead send us a messenger or you drop it in our email just as always uh thank you so far you are doing amazing and we are all ready to learn more from you today elsie however you've spoken from zero to three months up to nine months and i believe a lot of uh, moms or parents generally these things are new to them even though they have this is not maybe they're not first time moms some have two children mm. already three children already mm. and these things some, maybe some people are just hearing these things for the first time and i want us to just break it down let's go back to zero to three months you have mentioned mm. about the um, tracking you know the visual mm. tracking for zero to three months so a child a baby of three months should be able to track visually when an object is being moved like mm. when an object right according to what you've said and okay with what we, I do in a, also. we do a little test we put a little it's a red ring with a little string and we move it from one side to the other side and then the child okay. will be following it but another way is to is to use a rattle so you have the rattle maybe on the one side but sometimes we put the rattle behind the child because we want to make sure that it's they're listening so you're also yes. testing different things testing are they uh, paying attention at for, for the sound or are they just watching the this object coming by and, audio. and yes. we'll say well my child is looking they're following things but are they really following people you know are they looking at faces that's a very important part i mean there's an eye gaze test that they look they do on some children to if they feel like children are at risk so it's like a it's a it's a screen with a tv comp like um, um a video playing and they're playing lots of faces and they're looking to see if the children are actually watching the the eyes or the faces of the person so that's even as early as that you can see if a child is not tracking ne necessarily faces they're looking at movements but maybe they're looking at other things rather than the face so that's okay. another thing yes very good very good thank you so much for that because i really want you to say that again so bearing in mind that we are talking to parents who are not experienced in this at all so now we are yeah. bringing it back to zero to three months and i believe you understood that very well please note that down if you want any question on that aspect again how you can personally track your child visually and uh, maybe uh, yes visually and the whole audibly right for you to know that he, your child is listening however i just want to ask you a question regarding this before we go ahead to other stages of the babies so in case a mother is trying or maybe the child the baby is three months the mother has been tracking to know the visual tracking through object or whatever the case and using the rattle the maracas and everything and the child is not responding you can see this child is three months going to four months not responding to the movement the object not responding to the sound what do you think should be done at that particular time? Well, what can um, the parent do all, to help the child? Want, yeah, you don't want to be alert right away because all okay. children develop differently. So what you no, need to look uh, to do first, and mostly when a baby is born, they do, they do check the eyes and they check the hearing. But maybe it would be a good time to first do that because medically you want to make sure that the child is sound, that there's no, no issues medically. And then once after, after that is being done and you feel like, okay, well, I check the eyes, I check the ears, everything is good, then we can go from there. Then maybe you need to go and see a physician, that, a pediatrician to, that has experience with babies and can, can guide you better. Um, obviously, the earlier you start, early intervention, obviously, is the best. Early it's intervention key. doesn't necessarily mean like a, a program, but it means like, you, you go and have something done as early as possible. And early yeah, intervention doing your part can also be done by you. Yes, exactly. It's so not the, just, the word, it doesn't mean it's a person that you go to. Yes. So now I'm sure those who have been listening to me in the past, you've heard that word over again, early intervention, early intervention. It's not that you have to go to a doctor or a center. It's about you tracking your child and doing the need for what can you do. Yes. So, and you said something that is very important that I would like to reinforce is, uh, you said if it, uh, a baby of three months or four, thereabout is not maybe following the object tracking and not responding to the sound, it doesn't matter that it's a problem. The most important thing is, if I'm right, please, if I'm not saying this, the right thing, please stop me, Elsie. 
Uh, the most important thing is at the beginning, especially this part of the world that we are in Doha. <laughs> Why am I smiling? They, we always check the baby at birth. You know, they'll check the size, they'll check the hearing. So there is this, this first assurance that is already, if there's a problem, at that time they will mention already. But as a parent, if you're noticing this, we have said every child is unique in their own way. Some are very fast. Some are very, you know, they take their time. Not because they are slow, but they take their time. So you just have to pay attention, pay attention to every detail. Even though your child is three months and is not you know, ready to track and things like that. It's not like something to worry about, but it's a time for you to pay attention to details. Be trying good. to see. Yes. Yes. So you know yeah, that, okay, yeah. do I need help? Do I need to check with a doctor? If you see mm. that this is persistent, you know that it's persistent, there is no improvement, I believe such a parent should get help to confirm before it's too late, right? Am I right, Elfie? Exactly, yes. And, and I read much. something yesterday that was interesting. Children are kind of like popcorn, you know, popcorn kernels. Mm. We all get, they all get the same heat. But they pop at different times. So the at same the, thing. Yeah, perfect you're, example. You're, you're, all That's true. these children are developing at different times. So we're not we're not trying to. It's not a competition who's doing first or who's being last. It's about for them to do at their own pace whenever they're ready to to, to develop. So we have to look at those type of things. Yeah. So if you're okay. talking, if if you're going to go like three, zero to three and three to six, then when we're looking at three to six months, then Obviously, the first five years is the most important time of a child. Yes. True. Because so many uh, things are happening. And especially between the first two years, there's a lot of things happening with um, attention and communication and those and, and the, the, the gross motor, like the, the big muscles are developing. So the, sure. that's very important. So, but we're all kind of like uh, maybe nowadays we have apps. We can see how the child are developing all our children are developing we can uh, track them as well in that way we can say oh my child is a little bit behind or he's a little bit ahead but when we're looking at around six to nine months then these children they have a they're starting to build an attachment before that they'll go to anybody right you pick up mm. the child you can walk around with with somebody else's child before nine months and they won't mind but ra around nine months they start building that attachment to the mother and they're very close to the mom and they, they have this stranger anxiety. Very important part of their development too. So they need that. And but and, and sometimes we're worried that they don't want to go to, to strangers, but they grow out of it. They don't see thank this, you for thank you for much. mentioning that. Sorry for stopping you. Thank you for measuring mm -hmm. saying that statement. Because you know, this aspect, I think a lot of parents they get it twisted. See, just what you said, they think they worry, they don't want to go to strangers. And I always tell people that are close to me, it's a good sign that your child doesn't run to strangers. You know, it's a very big developmental state for that child that this is a stranger, I shouldn't run to the person. However, I think you should help us expand more on this point because I've seen parents trying to shout on their little one or baby, nine months, what's wrong with you? You have to be friendly. This is not being friendly, please. Let's, mm -hmm. let's understand this part. The fact that your child is, I tell people, the fact that your baby at 10 months, 9 months, doesn't, you know, I don't care, I can go to anybody. For me, it's a, it's a little bit of worry sign. But people get it twisted. Like my child, is, my baby is friendly. He doesn't care who is the person, even if it's a stranger, the person who is not around the house, even at one year. So please, if you can help us talk more about this and you know, clarify this is to part people. Of this stage. Yes, this is yes. part of a stage. And all children have to go through that stage too. Like they yes. have to go through the stage of, crawling and walking it's part of a stage so attachment is part of that and then they and then during that time they build a specific type of attachment and we're hoping that they build a good firm attachment so that they later in life have a better uh, relationship with everybody around so we're not uh, they're recognizing they know they start knowing people are strangers and they don't want to necessarily go to strangers but then they start um, if they go to preschool if you put them in nursery then they start being around more children. So they get to detach a little bit more. They're still very close to the mom. Maybe they get to start getting closer to the grandmother or the grandfather, whoever is living in the house too. So that's but the thing, they're developing their social and emotional of, development. Yes, yes, yes. This is a lot of changes happening during that time. And then by the time they come to school, when they're like four years old, which we know a lot of schools are starting the children very early, then there's a lot of, communication that during that time 
children mm. have to start talking a lot, they have to interact, they have to engage. So that's an also, I mean, obviously all these stages are very important and we don't want to say one is more important than the other, but it mm. needs, it's kind of like a sequence. We need this before we can get to that stage. We need, you're doing play therapy course right now. You know that mm. children have different stages in play as well. So same thing. First, children are just playing with their own body. And then they start interacting with things around them. They play with yeah. the toys around them. They pick up things. They bring it to their mouth. They bang it together. They make noise. Yes. And then they realize what this thing can do. Then it starts cause and effect. Oh, I did that. I was the cause of, of hitting that button and something popped up. So a lot of things is happening with the environment, with them, with their body, with the people around them. So it's mm. all part of the attention, all, all part of the tracking. Everything is kind of inter interrelated, if you understand what I'm saying. Very good. Thank you so much for that. I hope we are learning. I hope I'm not the only one learning today. Please feel free to <laughs> drop your I comments. Think you are. <laughs> Uh, drop your question if you have any contribution, if you have any. And so far, I want to say thank you. And please, can you just also, I know you're already saying things about that because if, but they might not be able to underline it. What are the importance of, or, or why do we need to track the benefit of tracking? If you track this, you know, this is going to be easier for you. And what, why do we need to track the importance of tracking and things like that can you please talk a little bit about so what that, do you please? think you've got twins what do you what do you uh, how did you see them together or differently uh, today, from each other today is not my talking Elsie. are you not i um, want to ask you i mean question, you're asking huh? today guys <laughs> all right you know just like we always said children are unique and i've said it over and again even in my videos that you know i've been i've been privileged to be working with people's children uh for a long time at least i can boldly say from year 2000, that is 22 years ago, that people give me their child, can you please look after my baby and everything. But I became a mother in year 2015, which makes it like a, it's more practical for me to see, even though I know yes. these things before. But this Once is Once you're practical. a mother, you understand it. Basically. Yes. So now I, I believe children are unique in their own ways, but having mm -hmm. twins at the same time, a boy and a girl, different gender, give me clear understanding about the uniqueness of every child, the pace, exactly. You know, the, uh, the, some things are just natural. I think it's just inbuilt. Like, this is a girl. This is the way they do things. Even from baby, for me, I can say, I, I started tracking my babies. I think from, my, from when they were, I was pregnant, I feel their movement. I know the side where this one is. This one is really kicking a lot. And when they came out from day one, I, I started tracking the, uh, the way they respond to each other. I keep them together. I let them just kick themselves, even as babies. Mm. Because then they're going to hurt themselves. They're not going to hurt themselves. Just watch. I track their listening. I was able to even, I think in one week, I was able to know that the personality is already coming out. I was very sensitive mm. that much. Like, oh, why is this one behaving like this? I need to quickly work on it. So mm. understanding the unique child and paying attention, it takes intentionality. So you have mm. to be intentional. I don't want to be on the OC today, I'll see. It's your talk. No, you but uh, um, I, I saw that you, <laughs> you said to be intentional. intentional parenting. That's making a decision of what I want to do with my child. So uh, all of, you see, like you said, a lot of people have their first child. A lot, a lot of people have no idea. A lot of people have some idea. Sure. And, and, and most, a lot of people know everything. But we, there's always something that we can learn. When we're looking at tracking in general, if, I, if you go back to the baby situation, when a baby starts looking and they're looking across the room and they see something, by the time they're 12 months old, even before that, like in six to nine months and nine to 12 months, they start looking at and they're even imitating. So you do sure. something and they're trying to copy what you're doing. So that's where the waving bye-bye and the clapping hands. So you're doing something and you inter they, they're starting to interact with the environment and with you. And that's part of the track. So they look at something, they make a decision like, how can I copy what they are doing or what that person or um, and maybe I'm banging my hand. It's, a lot of things are accidental. I push my hand on the table and I'm, and something is happening. I'm, I'm like banging the table and I realize that's me. I did that. So then I will repeat it, especially if you enjoy it. If people, if some, if a baby is waving at you and you're not waving back, the baby is probably mm. not going to want to do it again. 
or the baby is saying, ooh, and you say nothing. Mm. Or, or you say, oops, and the baby is saying, oops, like that happens a lot with us. We, I say something and the baby copies me. So when the baby copies me and I make another, like a exaggerated, like I do, like say, oops, again, then he'll start enjoying it and he'll want to do it again. So that is the, that's where the cycle starts, where they want to repeat. And, they, and that's where the learning starts. They start awesome. looking awesome. at you and happening. And it happens, it happens naturally for all of us. But for them, it becomes, it becomes a sequence. I'll just stop you a little bit. Thank you so much. I'm just enjoying okay. myself. No I just hope we all are enjoying ourselves at home. And from the statement, this last statement you just made, I have a few things, I think two things to bring out from it. Uh, you said if your baby makes a sound and we, you know, they get, they get the feeling like nobody's responding. So at the moment, I believe psychologically, they feel they have done something wrong and they might not want to do it again. Like, is that right or wrong? So if they're not getting the response, they should get a smile from the, uh, for the, person, from the person they are sounding to. They might not want to do that again. So that brings me back to the issue of maybe diaper change and maybe your, your, your baby is wet and the baby is crying. If the baby cries today for a wet diaper, you're not responding. Tomorrow for a wet diaper, you're not responding. The baby will stop crying because if I'm telling you my diaper is wet, but you're not doing nothing. That's why, you know, so they feel the same like that. So we have to really be sensitive to every action. A baby will not just cry. Just like I, I said something about tantrum before for maybe for toddlers. It's frustration based. No child will just throw tantrum. There's something. You can't say stop crying. I've said that before. Instead of saying stop crying, you should know why the child is crying. It's a communication way. It's a way of communication for that child at that particular time. So you can't tell your baby, you just rocking the baby, stop crying, stop crying. You have to find out why is the baby crying? Is it the diaper? Is she hungry? But if the baby keeps on doing this thing, trying to call your attention, and you are not responding, the baby will stop. Yes. Another thing and that I want to bring will... up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go sorry, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, just finish, then I'll, I will say what I want to say. No, no, so, so you. But when you were talking about the diaper, it makes me think that when we are doing these type of activities, like changing the diaper and giving the, giving the bottle feeding or whatever, oh, okay. it must be Please enjoying. don't send questions to my WhatsApp because, sorry, please, uh, I'm getting some questions, but on WhatsApp. It's going okay. to be tough for me to check your, okay. Uh, I think it's okay, right? You can check it for me here. Okay, no worries, no worries, no worries. I have another, I have backup. I'll get the message. Yeah, no backup. Because husband. I can see messages. Are, okay, all right. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry for cutting you. No, so I was just saying that if you're doing these type of activities, it should be enjoying enjoyment for the child too. So when you are changing the diaper, even if you don't like changing the diaper or this is not a, a, a nice activity for you, the child should make, it must make them feel like it's, it's enjoyable. So that's the time where you could talk to them and you could, because they're lying on their back and you're talking and you're smiling and laughing back at them. And this is also the time that you might see, but the child is not doing that back to me if they're not. Hopefully the mm. child is, no matter on the mood, depending on the mood, but some children will be, will be laughing and trying to kick and you're enjoying and you just, you just make songs and singing a song. My friend used to, when she's, putting the child in the bath, she'll sing a song about soap. And while she's washing the child, she's singing. So have making these activities uh, joyful or, or letting the child enjoy it also helps that interaction, building that. Interaction. I, I just want to repeat, over, uh, emphasize what you've just said. See, this, this is a big point. What you're saying, I'm really loving it. Diaper change also, if you have been listening to Elsie, it is not just something that you just want to change your child. It is an activity. There's a lot that, that you can achieve during diaper change. Even every other thing, dressing up your child. The child is you know, laid on the bed and you're changing diaper. You can, you can be developing your child eye contact at that moment, communication skills, singing nursery rhymes. It's not, so we should also be ready. Like, don't feel like, I just want to remove the poo. And you're just rolling the child. I just want to put the poo out. No, quickly, quickly. give your child eye contact. And let the child know that, okay, you made poo. So I tell people, I talk to my children from day one like they are adults. So a lot of people don't know when we talk now, how do they talk like this? Why do they talk like this? They talk like a grown-up or something. Because I never, you know, I, I talk to them from day one. 
Don't add it if you're just too extra. Their children know, they're learning. Talk to your child, you made poo, I'm gonna wipe you now. And mommy's gonna give you a fresh diaper. These things count. Thank you, my love. These things count. It is just not the time for you. I just want to remove. Oh, come on, go, roll it. And, oh, come on, let's pay attention. Especially if There's you're a in a hurry going. and you're a busy mom. Yeah, it might be difficult. Mm. I'm not saying all of us have a lot of But it shouldn't be every speak. time. It shouldn't be yes. every time. There should be that time that your child wants to enjoy the moment. Let yes. that be connection. Let that be connection. Yeah. Don't just do everything in a hurry. I'd just like you to send me the question if you have the... Well, we have some children that... Uh, ah, that on the screen. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay. We have some children that have difficulty feeding. And that's also a very important thing. If you, if you make the... If every time the child is not wanting to eat what you're giving them, then it's a struggle every time you're feeding. I'm not saying all children are like that, but some children are picky eaters. They don't want to swallow. They spit the things out. It's just a, it's, it's a, a nightmare to feed them. Then the yes. parent also has this resistance. So your feeling has to also be calm. You also have to be calm when you're working with a child. You have to try to relax because if you're stressed, your child feels that stress. I mean, I remember when I was, I, it's a long time ago, 100 years ago, when I was a new mom, I was, well, the baby was not really responding much, so I never really talked to her, but I danced. You know, I held her in my arms, and I was, maybe when there's music, I'm dancing. But it's it's difficult to respond to something or somebody that's not responding back to you. But, mm. So some parents feel like, well, he's just lying there, and he, there's nothing happening. I just want to do yeah, just a baby. I'm tired, first of all. I'm a new mom. I'm tired. I don't want to, to, to I just want to get through this. That's just right. see, I'm loving this. Thank you so much. And last week, you know, I spoke about stressing your child, and that was I was I I, I did a topic oh, about stressing. that last yes. week. Yes, parents stressing their children, but they are not aware that this is the stress for their child. Sometimes our children, the yes. Mm -hmm. No, as in apart from transparent the stress, what I mentioned is about oh, uh, you know, some things are stress for the children, but we are not aware. We think oh, yes. it's normal. When your child is always, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about maybe not early years now, talking about maybe from five to okay. 10 years or young adults or teenagers, but your child doesn't want to always stay around you, doesn't want to, no, cannot look at you. Anytime you're there, your child cannot concentrate. You should know that you've been stressing your child. You have to pay attention. Yes. What have you been doing? Your child wants to say something, but you're not even ready to listen. You just want to judge, judge the child. Yes. So these, are, these were the things I spoke about last week. Thank you so much. And again, I don't want to forget about when you were talking, thank you, Pekele, when you were talking about uh, children learn by imitating, uh, imitating, you know, they, we teach them by a lot of imitating, especially in early years, baby stage, infant, so when we clap, they want to clap and everything. So I understand this part, but I want you to make, say, uh, I have this question I've been getting, I, I always try my best to explain to people, but I would like you, if you can help me out today about echolalia, you know, when you say oh. something, the child is... Uh, the repeating repetition, echo, you know, echolalia. So now I get, um, let's say a child of three years or four years cannot really communicate very well. But uh, you know, whatever they can, they can't make their words. They can't make a sentence from their from themselves. But if you say hello, they say hello. That's for me. I think that's obviously echolalia. How are you? How are you? So now uh, a lot of parents get this mixed up because they know that children learn from repetition. And your child is already four, five, three, still repeating. And as a teacher, when I was in, I was in classroom, you know, I've seen, I had cases like that in the past. And it's not like you're not judging any child, but you know, you know, pay attention. But I've seen parents saying, I know my child, not even saying anything to them. You know, they're trying to be defensive. Like, uh, my child is okay. They let, it's talking anyway. So how do we now help the child or how do we pass across how do we manage these things? A child who is suffering echolalia, the child cannot tell you I want to eat by themselves. But if you say, are you hungry? The child will say, I'm, are, are you hungry? What is your name? What is your name? Is there anything you can say about mm. that, regarding that? So, yeah, that's concerning for some parents because they feel like mm. uh, echolalia is one of the signs that some people say is for autism, autism spectrum disorder. So, so but it yeah. doesn't mean if a child has echolalia that they do have autism. It's on the spectrum. Um, yeah. Especially in the early years when people are starting to talk, 
if if you like if you're learning a language I can and you. i say something in my language you will copy it right you will say if i say welkom um ek hoop jy genie die dag then you're going to try and copy something that i'm saying so sometimes children ek do equalalia because they want to understand it and remember everybody doesn't process things the same thing that same that we do so, uh, if i say something to you you might take a few min minutes or seconds to actually realize what i'm saying and then you're copying we also yeah. have to be careful because some children are watching a lot of tv they're watching a lot yeah. of cartoons they're lot um marsha and the bear i'm not saying anything about any of the shows they're all great but we use that as a babysitter and put the child in front of the tv so they end up copying and they start having an accent talking as if they are that a character which is it's not necessarily bad but that's the they have to learn something so they're learning from the tv right so i'm not saying it's a problem but it can be a problem if there's a lot of combination like if you what the child is watching too much tv and first of all i would say equalalia is a way for a child to understand whatever you say speaker so say if i'm an arabic child and you talking maybe he's saying that word again because he wants to understand but it could be a problem too not saying that yeah. it's not a problem it could be too but don't be too alarmed right at first first look at other situations too if a child is not talking at all and the only time that they're talking is equalalia that might be a problem but if they're saying other things too they're talking to but just in between remember to when we're stressed we take a long time to also process things if you're worried about something and something stressing you you take some uh, but i think i i just want to say something about the ecolalia again so now we understand ecolalia is not necessarily a problem but when the child is not saying any other thing it's just the echo in only so ecolalia you, then it's yeah only yeah. ecolalia then does it that maybe there's something a sign so we have to yeah, i need help the context that it is in the context if it if it's a child like if it's like you and you're trying to copy what i'm saying but uh, ecolalia could be autism as well but i'm not saying it is could be could be that. so for yeah, now okay say. so do you think a child who is always only ecolalia only echoing will not make a sentence by themselves do you think picture therapy can be helpful for the such child what are you saying picture therapy picture exchange no no cards? no speech speech therapy a oh, speech therapy yes 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 it's yes, definitely mm -hmm. speech therapy will help because they will try to have um, get different types of communication so they'll help yeah. the child talk in a different way maybe the child needs to um show what they want through a little computer or a ipad or whatever maybe it's difficult for them to say words but it doesn't yeah, mean they can't they can form do. the words they can form the words so are able to to say things so yes yeah, speech therapy is, is definitely most of the time that's the first thing that the doctor will give you a referral speech therapy and obviously also occupational therapy but you need to look at you need to assess the child and look at different things the different domains you need to see what where is the difference where is the problem you not know, i won't say yeah. problem where is the difficulties yeah, yeah, not talking about just problems, the challenge and just yeah. about difficulties yes just difficulties all right very good thank you very much i'll just want to because of time i know you have another uh class after this and i really appreciate you coming out for me this time it really means a lot no to me oh uh, i will just read out question that i have here we have five questions wow okay what is this pla uh, what wow. is the place of biomedical in early intervention program with autism autistic kids sorry what did you say and another question is how can people how can people get in the program see we so some questions we can really and i will read the question i just want uh, people to know i'll read all the questions just pick anyone if it's okay, one sure. you can answer just go ahead say we are going to have more of mm -hmm. this my i said it before it might not be on facebook so some of these questions are for advanced class so basically today we're just doing for general people like parents as a whole So some of your questions might go into the advanced class and we might not be able to touch it today. However, I'm just going to read all of the question. Uh I said how can people get in to the program in Qatar? What program are you talking about? That question I don't understand myself also. Another Maybe she's uh, talking about says, the early intervention program in in Qatar. Okay. 
Yeah. How can people get into the program? Are you, are you talking about CDC program or I guess? I guess talking about early intervention child, Are you program. talking about child development program? Okay. Or, yeah, so like, is there a special way to get into? The, can you please tell people how can they get into the early intervention program? Yes, uh, for uh, early to intervention. Amat? Is there any information yeah, so for, for that? For early intervention, they first have to have a yes, child development program. by a primary health care. Sorry? I think there's a delay. So for early intervention program, they have to uh, first get a referral through the primary health care or um, one of our, because you go to the primary okay. health care, you tell them. Okay, I said, okay, they the have a referral, health. they'll bring the letter. I think the network is not uh, balanced anymore. Yes. Oh, network. Healthcare, they would have done a screening and see that your child needs further assistance. And from that time, you will be get, get, being able to be. All right, my back. Okay. The network people. Um, now we are having issues with the network. Our guest is off. Hopefully, yes. I think you know the you know the issue of VPN and Qatar. And these days, the VPN we just switch off on its own. And once the VPN is off, we can get her. Hopefully, she'll be back for the next. We can have her for more ten more minutes. So. Uh, and what she's trying to say is about the how to get into the program is you have to get a referral. I think the referral is what you're going to take to CDC for registration. Then you wait for appointment. It's I think it's, it takes time, but you just need to go with your referral and uh, you register and you wait for your appointment. I just hope I'm going to get her back because I really want her to shed more light on these things. Uh, I know we won't be able to work far for the tracking. You know, we've, we've not been able to do much. And I know one hour is not a lot of time, and we're going to be having some of these videos or some of advanced classes that I just mentioned. I said that before. Later, I'm just waiting to see if she's going to come back. Oh, Elsie, if you can hear me, I think just check your VPN. Mine also went off the other time. You just put it, connect again, and let's do this for the next 10 minutes, and uh, we call it today. I don't think she's here right now. I'll see if you are here. Just say hi. Is she back? I can't really see comments. Oh, Essie, can you make a request, please? Okay, I can see you right there. Because sometimes I can send you an invite, but I think that invite is getting delayed. Just a moment, people, bear with us. I want to try and invite her. Okay. I sent you an invite. I don't know if you receive it. Can you just remove the pin? It's, it's not making me to see the comments. Remove the pin. I have the question here. I sent you an invite, but if you don't see my invite, just make a request. I will bring you in. Give this to Daddy Baba. Precious, give this to Daddy. Let me open it again. Okay, there you go. I can see you here. Yeah. He's yes, back. Sorry. Thank you for coming back. I'm back. Yeah, the network. I just my own VPN also went off at a point. So I had to like go and connect and yes, Okay, thank you, you for coming back. We have a few more minutes you because were. I understand you have to be in another class in the next few minutes. So we'll let you go. 
So uh, I've tried to explain what yeah, you've said about how to join the program. I believe the person is talking about uh, how to get into CDC. I know there's, you said the referral and they need to, yeah. when they have the referral, okay. Yeah, you need go to go to the primary health care and then get a referral to one of our developmental physicians. And then once you get an appointment with a developmental physician, which could, could take between three to six months, then only you can get an appointment after that physician has seen you to come to early intervention. So hopefully by that time it's not too late. Oh, yeah, but we good. have an early intervention program from zero to three, and then there's an autism program from three to six. So either way, people will be able to, to get the services that they need. Uh, depending on, I'm not saying it's necessarily autism, but you'll be able to be seen by oh, well, a developmental good. physician. Yes. They'll be able to, yeah. yeah. I think, okay, we, I not think one I just yet. want okay. to say for the, for the last few minutes, the most important thing that you could do as a parent is try to make sure that you connect with your child. Okay. Make sure that you have, start with attention and try to try to interact, try to uh, connect build, with your child. Uh, secure relationships. Yes. Can you hear me still? Try to talk with them, try to play with them and try to connect with them. Very important. Talk, play and connect. Yes, I can hear you. And those points are very essential. Hmm. Yeah. See, you so know, maybe I've, heard, I've heard parents say, my child can play too much. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard parents, I've seen parents complaining about their child. I've heard parents or uh, I've seen parents say, complaining about that their child can play. A lot of play, and I, one thing I understand is play is children's work. Yes. So can you please uh, tell or explain more about that when a child is playing? Yes, for you know, play also. See, sometimes we want our children to be like a robot. Sit down, sit down. Walk, walk. A child must play. Mm. It's part of growth. Can you yeah. please uh, help us more that? To me, it's important for a child to play, but it's also important for the Go parent ahead, to sit down and play with a the child. They can't just let the child play by themselves. There's different oh, types of it's play. Delayed. If a child yeah, is just together. playing okay. by himself, it's also not good. So you need, the child needs to interact with other people and in, to hmm. include them in the play. So bringing the child, playing with a child and trying to connect with a child and do it as often as you can. Good. That's what I would say. Giving slime to my baby to play with or my child to play with. I'm giving Play-Doh to my child to play with. I'm an adult, I don't need Play-Doh. We all have sensory needs anyway. It's, you know, I said, I was talking about this last week anyways. Find what is gonna help you. We all somehow have sensory needs. Play with your children, it helps them. There is a lot that will be going on at the same time when you play with them, even in the sensory, uh, messy play. Do it, get messy. Don't be afraid to get messy with your child. You know, the role play, let your child be the lead. I believe, just like myself that I've learned today, a lot of people learned a lot today. So I want to say thank you to everyone for joining. Thank you for joining. I appreciate you being here with me, Miss Remy. Thank you for joining, Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Pasca, Mrs. Quaker, the Kinomo, Mrs. Shoma Day. I think that is a uh, Stadokas. You're right there. Thank you for joining. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everybody, for joining me today. I believe I'm not sure uh, live. I'm not sure I'll confirm if I'm going to be live next week. Or it's going to be pre-recorded. But for now, I said thank you for joining. But I believe you learned something. If you learned something, can you just type, I learned. I learned. And I'm ready to just let you know that I learned new things today. And uh, my understanding is broadening. And, you know, my passion for children and their life cannot be overemphasized. Did you learn something today? Did you learn something already? Even if it's one thing you've learned, let me know. Did you learn something today? Nobody's typing. Sure. I'm not seeing comment that I learned something. Thank you, Miss Remy. Eri Ferdetova, thank you for joining me, my sister. God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Diki Nomo, thank you for joining. Thank you. Yes, you learned. I'm glad you learned something today, sir. Thank you for joining, everybody. God bless you. Yes, Mrs. Shomade, you learned something very good. And that's my joy. Even if it's one thing you've learned today, it means a lot to me, and I'm not going to take that for granted. Thank you once again, everybody, for joining. Thank you for always 
Thank you, Mrs. Quaker. Thank you, Alega. I see your hand up. Thank you for joining. Thank you for learning something. Thank you for learning something today. And I'm not taking your coming out for this girl for granted. I want to say thank you once again. And if you see my face for the first time, my name is Oye. Oye Layo. And I am a parenting coach, your parenting coach, and many more to discover soon. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. God bless you. God bless you. Thank okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Arifa. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Are we going to call it a get a day today? Mrs. Pascal, thank you. You learned something. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. You can always send us your question anytime. You know, if you have my phone number, I'm always readily available for you to always give my, you know, my best to what I know that is solution. Be free anytime to give me a call. I'm available. And for those of you who doesn't have my number, there is a line on the Vision Guide page. You can go ahead. You can call the line. Maybe you can reach me. And if you cannot reach me, you'll be, you will get to know when you can reach me on that line. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I remain your slowly. Don't forget that parenting must be intentional. It is personal. Your skill or your way of parenting doesn't have to match your friend's way. Don't forget that children are unique in their own ways. It is important for you as parents to play with your children. Don't see as a, a, the screen or the toys as a babysitter. Find time to connect with your child. Play with them. Don't be afraid to get messy. Don't forget even when you're changing your child's diaper. It's not a time to just say, I just want to remove the pool. It is very important. A lot can go on at that time. You know, you can, uh, you can be talking to your child. You can help your child communication you can get on the miss Denise thank you for joining sometimes I see you on my show on my live uh, session thank you thank you thank you so much miss Dennis for joining miss Ella Ella Mella thank you for joining everyone God bless you God bless you God bless you intentional vision carrier carry the vision jealously it must be purposeful thank you so much for joining me everybody bye for now I love you all